आप स्क्रीन के ऊपर देख सकते हो लास्ट फोर एग्ज़ाम हो रहे हैं मतलब कि चार एग्ज़ाम लास्ट जो अभी अभी होकर गए हैं रिसेंटली बात करते हैं 11 जुलाई की उससे पहले एग्ज़ाम हुआ था 6 जुलाई को उससे पहले एग्ज़ाम हुआ था 29 जून को एंड उससे पहले एग्ज़ाम हुआ था 22 जून को चारों एग्ज़ाम में कंटिन्यू हमारी प्रडिक्शन पीडीएफ हिट गई है राइटिंग 100 परसेंट सेम रीडिंग वन पैसेज टू पैसेज सभी एग्ज़ाम में 100 परसेंट सेम स्पीकिंग की प्रोडिक्शन हिट 100 परसेंट सेम और इसमें कोई झूठ नहीं है कोई फेक नहीं है बहुत सारे लोग ये बात बोलते हैं प्रोडिक्शन के ऊपर ट्रस्ट नहीं करना चाहिए विश्वास नहीं करना चाहिए तो आपकी मोबाइल स्क्रीन के ऊपर ऐसा कोई भी स्क्रीन ऐसा नहीं है कि जो हमने गूगल से लिया हो सभी के सभी मोबाइल स्क्रीन रिकॉर्डिंग चल रही है तीनों के तीनों आप देख सकते हो वन टू एंड थ्री ये मोबाइल स्क्रीन नंबर ऑफ डिफरेंट रिकॉर्डिंग and you will have to answer questions on what you hear there will be time for you to read the instructions and questions and you will have a chance to check your work all the recordings will be played once only the test is in four sections write all of your answers in the listening question booklet at the end of the real test you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet Now turn to section 1 of your booklet. Section 1. A campus radio station is going to be in action. An interviewer is interviewing a man from the university for the survey. Listen to the conversation between them and circle the best answer from A, B, or C for questions 1 to 4. You now have some time to read questions 1 to 4. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will never hear the recording for the second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Excuse me, I'm conducting a campus survey. Would you have time to answer a few questions? What's it all about? We're doing some market research for a new campus radio station starting in the next few months. That's okay. Sounds good. Great. I'll just work through this form with you, and if we could start with some personal background information. Sure. Right. If I could have your age, please. Twenty-six. Okay. Good. And are you a student, teacher, or in another job? Well, I'm a tutor, but I'm also a postgraduate student, so I don't know what you might call me. What do you think? Okay. Well, I'm more of a teacher, really. Fine. And would you mind if I asked about your salary, or I could leave it blank? No, that's okay. It's twenty thousand dollars a year. Thanks. Right. Now about your current listening habits. What would you say is your main reason for listening to radio? Well, I'm usually busy during the day at work, so I usually only listen to the radio at night. It helps me relax and unwind, even if I'm studying. Good. And how many hours a day, on average, do you listen to the radio? Well, not a lot, really. I'd say just over an hour, all told. Now you have some time to read questions five to ten. Now listen to the second part of the interview and answer questions 5 to 10. So, what are the two main times of the day that you listen to the radio? Well, for a little while around breakfast time and then it tends to be later after dinner when I finished any serious work I need to do. And what sort of radio programs do you like? 
I like the news, but I also like classical music. It helps me to relax. Fine. And turning to the new campus station, which type of programs would you prefer? I think the existing radio stations cater for my need for news. So I'd like to see programs about local information, you know, providing a service to the campus community. And in the same vein, perhaps more for academic viewers, you know, some lectures or relevant programs. Oh, I see. And if you had to give the new directors some specific advice when they set up the station, what would you tell them? I think I'd advise them to be careful about the quality of the broadcasts, you know, the sound system. There are a lot of radio stations and people can change their loyalty quickly if it doesn't meet their needs. I think they should do more of these kinds of interview too, you know, talking with existing and potential customers. Oh, I'm pleased you think it's useful. Certainly, yeah. Good. Now, this station will not be fully funded by the university. So how often do you think it is tolerable to have adverts? I think, well... Out of that list, I'd say every quarter of an hour. Of course, that's providing they don't last for ten minutes each time. Oh, quite. And are you interested in attending any of the special promotions for the new station? Yes, I'd be happy to, as long as they're held on the campus or nearby. OK, I'll note that down. And finally, may we put you on our mailing list? Well, I prefer not except for the information about the promotions you just mentioned. OK. Can I have your name and address? Of course. I have a card I can give you. Oh, great. And thanks a lot for your time, and we look forward to seeing you. Yeah, sure. Mm, thanks. This is the end of Section 1. Now you have half a minute to check your answers. Section 2. In this section, you'll hear a conversation among two students and their tutor about the presentation they are going to make at the tutorial class. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Um, I feel a bit nervous. I haven't done that before. Although, many of my classmates in the same tutorial group have finished theirs. But I think them a little uninteresting because they just read out their notes. I hope mine will be more attractive it and... seems you have a higher demand for yourself. As for me... I have no sense of uneasiness because I made one last semester, but I feel no sense of satisfaction about it. It lacked strong arguments, I think. How much did you get for the last presentation, Jason? Eighty-three mm, percent, actually, but my goal for the next one is over eighty-seven percent. It's pretty good. What is your topic for this one? Uh, strategies for reading. I feel my biggest problem is in the reading speed, rather than vocabulary, which is most students' problem, though. I am slow, especially in reading articles on my f major courses. They are complex and dull. Mm, have you found any effective methods? Well, I am not quite sure. I suppose to skim the books or articles is a good approach. Yes, by skimming the book first, you get the choicest parts. It saves a lot of time. 
You don't have to read every word of the passage, but you have to learn to read certain parts intensively. Yes, I include that in my presentation. There is one thing I'm not clear yet. Why don't we make presentations more related to our major? Once you learn to write clearly, read analytically, and listen to lectures effectively, you'll begin professional tutorials. That means you should. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. Six. Well, Karen, how is your presentation? I am still in a panic. I want to find some more interesting topics about writing, but I wonder what articles I can refer to, because there are so many of them. Did you get the list of the reading materials handed out last class? Yes, but there are over 20 on it. I have only a week to prepare, so I wonder if OK, can... let me give you some suggestions. You needn't read them all, because some of them deal with the same issue. The article by Hallsworth is really worth reading. It covers the aspects of organising the thoughts and ideas. OK, Hallsworth. You should also read the article by Jackson. But just look at the part on research methodology, now, how they did it. Right, I'll read that one. You should also read the article by Fisher, but just look at the part on the writing plan. That is, how to plan your writing in a systematical way. OK, Fisher, got that. Um, and if you have time, the one by Risewell says very relevant things. It teaches how to title your articles and make it appealing. You should finish the whole book. OK. Now, the one by Burns, if I were you, I wouldn't bother with the whole passage. Just read the conclusion, which summarises the use of rhetoric. Oh, now I understand. Thank you very much. That is the end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 3. You will hear a student, Alex, asking his tutor for advice about essay writing. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 21 to 27. Hi, Alex. Come in. I gather you wanted some help with writing essays. Yes. I'm finding this first term difficult, and I'm worried about the assignments we have to do for January. Well, let me see if I can help. You shouldn't panic about it, because essay writing is a very straightforward process, really. What it involves is organising the information that you want to include. You shouldn't have more than you can easily manage within the word count. Make sure you haven't got too much or anything irrelevant. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to look at that and work out what you need and what you don't need before you start. And then you just have to think about how you're going to put forward your argument. Oh, that sounds very straightforward when you put it like that. <laughs> but 
I'm worried I haven't got the necessary skills for writing an effective essay because English is my second language. Mm. Well, perhaps you misunderstand the skills you need. You need to be able to analyze your data, and then I would say the skills of interpretation and expressing yourself are important. Perhaps it's this last one that bothers you. But the more essays you write, the more you will develop these skills. Yes, and I don't quite know how to improve at that. Though, as you say, I know practice will help,、mm. and I need to make sure I've got everything ready before I start. Yes, what is vital to good essay writing is preparation. So make sure you build in enough time to do the research you need. Are there any other sources I can use to help me with essays? Yes, you should go to the library and look through the reference section, because there are books that focus on the style we use in academic writing, and those will help you a lot. The other thing that you should think about is what happens when you've actually written your essay. Too many students just complete their work. And hand it in. Whereas, what you should be doing is making sure that you edit it as thoroughly as possible. Oh yes, that's a good idea. Then I'd pick up any mistakes and also see if it reads logically. Exactly.、Uh, the other thing is, again, what a lot of students do is get their essays back, look at the marks, then just file it away.、Hmm. They don't realise that if they checked it through and looked at what the tutor had written, then they can learn from their old essays. Yeah, I can see that's a good idea. So, is that okay? You can always come back to me. To read questions twenty-eight to thirty. Actually,、uh, there were a couple of other things I wanted to ask you about essay writing. Uh huh. I had had a few thoughts of my own about what I should do, such as really taking good notes when I'm reading, because that helps, doesn't it?、Mm, I think it improves your knowledge rather than your actual writing.、Uh, but one tip I can give you is to try and not read too much. Otherwise, you end up including irrelevant material in your essay. Remember to stay on task. Yes, sometimes I have problems interpreting the questions correctly, or the whole question seems overwhelming to me.、Mm. What I try to do is highlight the key parts and divide it into smaller chunks so I can manage it. Well, you might find it useful to break it down even further. By making sure you understand all the words perfectly before you start, things like assess or comment and such like. Yes, I see. Sometimes, after an objective analysis, the question actually asks you for a subjective opinion, but you must remember to support your arguments if that's the case.、Mm. Um, one final comment I can make is about using your own words. You must try to do this as far as possible. You're expected to summarize what you've read, not just string together a list of quotations. In fact, you shouldn't have too many. Just use them where it's really important. Okay, thanks. Do you read other students' essays when you've finished? No. Why? Is that a good idea? Well, you can confuse each other, so I'd advise against it. But it's up to you. Okay.、Uh, thanks very much for your time. And...
Section four. You are going to hear a lecture on fishing. First, look at questions thirty-one to thirty-six. As you can see, there are four alternative answers: A, B, C, and D for each question. Decide which alternative is the most suitable answer, and circle the correct letter. Good morning again, ladies and gentlemen. And in case you've forgotten, my name is Dr. North from the Marine Habitat Research Unit at the University. And I'm going to continue from the lecture that I gave a fortnight ago on humankind's relationship with the sea from a historical point of view, and also on attitudes to different types of fishing. In today's talk, I would like to focus on the current problems in the fishing industry in Europe, and in particular, the present scarcity of marine fish. As with the last lecture, I've placed a book list. A few relevant articles and a copy of this lecture on the department website. A statistic to begin with: since the 1970s, stocks of the most heavily fished species have fallen on average by 90 percent. And why has this happened? Well, there's a chain of events which begins with the demographic changes that have taken place in the world over the last century. During this time. The world population has grown at a phenomenal rate, with efficient and heavy fishing, which is technology-driven, meeting the increasing demands for food. As a consequence, many fishing stocks in the European waters, from the Atlantic to the North Sea and the Mediterranean, are now on the verge of collapse. But the problem is not restricted to European waters; it's a situation that's all too clear all around the world. Fish stocks in the Pacific Ocean, for example, are now on the verge of collapse due to a combination of overfishing and natural changes in ocean ecology. And there's another reason behind the increased demand for fish, and that is the changes in the eating patterns of different countries. Certain countries have a long tradition of fishing, for example, the southern European countries. But eating patterns have changed in countries like the United Kingdom, where fish was once considered as food for the poor rather than the rich. People have been turning to fish as a cheap and healthy alternative to meat, driving up demand and depleting stocks. Food scares like BSE and foot and mouth disease have also driven people away from eating meat, which again is invariably replaced by fish. Before the speaker continues, look at questions thirty-seven to forty. As you listen, complete the table. Write no more than three words for each answer. Another important reason is that a sizable proportion of the catch from modern trawlers or fishing boats is thrown away. Nets quite often land fish that are not wanted and which are thrown back into the sea dead. Discarded nets and other traps are responsible for the deaths of many fish. Our seas, like the rest of our environment, are littered with rubbish, which also destroys lots of fish. And fish are also being changed by the chemicals dumped into the oceans, as well as by overfishing. So the size of certain species is decreasing. 
More then have to be fished to produce a decent catch. And the solution? Well, there has to be more than one answer to the problem. Fish farms provide a partial solution, but the quality of the fish is usually inferior to those in the wild. Reducing the amount of fish that any one trawler or fishing boat is allowed to land is the most effective, but also the most unpopular measure. Countries in Europe like Spain rely heavily on fishing and are naturally against any step which restricts their catch. But if the depletion of fishing stocks continues, there will be no fish left to fish. Take the disappearance of cod from the great banks off Newfoundland, which was once the richest cod fishing area in the Atlantic. After a dramatic fall in the cod population for some unknown reason, a ban was imposed, which, it was hoped, would lead to a repopulation of the cod stocks. The cod did not return, and many fishermen were put out of work. This is a scenario which we do not want to be repeated on a large scale. Now, if you look at this table on the screen, you can see where I... That's the end of section four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.